Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's, let's get, get down, down to business, business on Tower Talk, Talk Business Radio on, on the, the voice of Nassau, Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the NAS Community College Foundation. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston-Hill, CEO, Keeper of the Brand, Marketing and Digital Agency, and Michael Chung. And we're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We bring you weekly business advice, tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business. Plus, we interview the top business leaders in the industry. Helping provide you with business empowerment today is Sean Phillips, CEO, Genesis Signs and Graphics. Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, we're excited to have you here. So why don't you start out, just tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am a uh, native Long Islander from Westbury originally. Um, Went through the whole Westbury school system, ended up going to college in Atlanta at uh, Morehouse College. And uh, right out of college, I started my uh, career in sales and marketing. Uh, I worked for Kodak, which is a a dinosaur at this point in terms of I used to sell film and uh, all the cameras and all their consumer products, uh, which no longer exist at this point. But um, that's where I got my start in Dallas, Texas, and then uh, moved over to a sales role at Coca-Cola and uh, was there for about five years between New York and Ohio. And at the end of the day, I decided that selling soda was not what I wanted to do anymore. I was um, a lot more creative than that. So I left that industry and moved over to uh, work for um, in the television industry. I worked at Viacom for a number of years, um, starting off with uh, TV land um, and got to work with all the shows that I grew up on uh, back in the day. And uh, then I took a move over to MTV, where I spent a good portion of my career there, um, putting together promotions and sponsorship opportunities for advertisers um, in that in that world. And cycled through a number of different uh, networks over the years, uh, between BET and NBC Universal and Turner, you know, all those networks there, all the integrated marketing. So I've, I've always had a, a a creative background um, and uh, television is where I ended it and decided one day I don't want to do this anymore. I was burned out from corporate and uh, decided to go on my own. And that's where uh, Genesis was started. Uh, The name uh, Genesis came from uh, a new beginning. And so it was a new phase in my life. And uh, that was in 20. 16, March 11th, 2016, when I left my, my job with nothing else lined up. And uh, in June of 2017, we opened our doors of Genesis. That must have been pretty brave to, to jump off of working with all those really cool brands, you know, household name brands, and then going off you know, on your own. Do you tackle the brands differently? No, I, I think my, my background actually set me up nicely for, for what I do now. Um, I've always had a B2B background and that's what this is. So the skills are transferable. Um, I treat somebody who owns, you know, a small restaurant um, in whatever town here in Long Island, the same way I would treat, you know, a fortune 100 uh, corporation. So that part of me doesn't change. So, Sean, tell us a little bit more about Genesis Signs and Graphics and exactly what your services are and how you help the small local businessman to the Fortune 100 or 500 companies that you work with. Sure. So we are a full service sign company, uh, not to be confused with a printing company, uh, which does more of the brochures, flyers, um, business cards type of thing. We're a, a corporate and commercial sign company. Uh, We do interior and exterior signage as well as vehicle graphics um, for either single vehicles or fleets. Um, So if there is a sign in your business inside or out, you know, we can create it. Um, 
And we've been doing that, like I said, since uh, June of 2017. Now, I'm sure, Sean, you know, you mentioned March of 2017 uh, as the birth of Genesis or the day you left corporate America. Um, I'm sure that was, you know, you know, horrifying for you, you know, to figure out, you know, what's next in your life. And, I, you know, I, I feel like, you know, reading your bio, we have similar, a similar background and similar journey as far as, you know, working in sales solution and partnerships and for these major brands. And then voila, your life is totally changed, you know, married with children and trying to figure out what's next. Um, can you share with our listeners how you came to decide You know, I'm going into business for myself and not going to stay with, you know, trying to get back into corporate America. Sure. Um, Indeed, it was scary. And it still is. I mean, I'll be I'll be honest with you. It's you know, I I miss the stability um, of a a corporate role, at least at that point. Um, Certainly miss the check (laughs) that I was getting, (laughs) you know, back then. Um, But. You know, there is no no price on the mental and physical f- freedom that I have right now. Um, so, yeah, that decision was not made in a vacuum. Um, I consulted, obviously, with my wife, um, who has been very supportive from the time I came home and said, I can't do this anymore. Um, and it was a joint decision. It was kind of like, what do we need to do? to maintain what we've, you know, our household the way we had before. Um, and we kind of back ended it into where we are today. Um, the decision to get into what I'm doing now, um, you know, I didn't leave my job at NBC and say, I'm going to open a sign company. Um, I quite frankly thought I was just going to change industries and just do something a little bit more aligned with, um, you know, my passions. Um, but when some of those things were still coming to a, a dead end, um, I was watching TV one day and I saw a commercial for the uh, International Franchise Expo at the Javits Center. I said, oh, maybe I'll go, uh, you know, check that out. And uh, I went and walked the entire, you know, exhibit and came home and I was like, I'm going to open up a franchise. I'm going to buy a franchise. <laughs> And was excited about doing that um, and actually went down the path uh, pretty far with with uh, one of the franchises that we had explored. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I kind of pulled back and thought maybe I can still do this um, model, but not using the franchise route. Right. So um, I kind of took some gems from some people that I talked to and you know we ended up coming into this industry because it hit all the things that I was used to be used to doing like I said b2b it still allowed me to be creative uh, which is something I always wanted to do Um, and it was quite frankly it was an industry that is recession proof Um, there's always going to be a sign wherever you turn and it was it was almost like when you buy a new car, you're like, and you start seeing that car on the road everywhere else, up until that point. So now, then I was seeing signs everywhere, and I was like, yeah, this this feels right. And so uh, I jumped into this industry, and you know, haven't looked back yet. And we're just we're just you know we're just beginning, uh, but we're we're happy with the momentum that we're we have so far. Are there any resources, you know? from making that, that leap and going into the franchise model, once you made that decision, were there any resources um, that you jumped into or any first steps that someone in your, in your shoes might benefit from doing the same? I had actually leveraged a franchise consultant, um, somebody who can, you can bounce some of these ideas off of. And, and, you know, he actually made me think about, things that I hadn't thought before. Like I said, we looked at one business at one point, but uh, it was a seven day a week type of job, right? It was, it was uh, something that I was actually trying to get away from and I wanted more work-life balance and that seven days a week wouldn't have given me that. Uh, So 
I would say leverage somebody who is, um, you know, if you are looking at a franchise route, you know, getting a consultant, um, look at people who are around you who also own businesses or run something on their own. Talk to them. I talk to a lot of my friends who, who also own their business, who own a business and just pick their brain um, about how they got started um, and some challenges that, that they faced. And so that helped me to dodge a lot of bullets, you know, on the way. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of Nash Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill and Mike Chung. And our guest today is Sean Phillips, CEO, Genesis Signs and Graphics. Now, what are the, some of the common misconceptions of the business uh, that you're in? Um, I think most people who call us for signs, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a misconception. It's just more of a, uh, a lack of knowledge of the industry. And so people will call looking for signs thinking that it's, it's very cheap. Um, and there are some signs that, you know, that fall into the category of less expensive. But when it comes to if you're opening a business, a brick and mortar business, and you need real signage, there is some education that needs to be, you know, that we do with clients to let them know uh, that this isn't a, a, a inexpensive proposition. Sean, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, there were some hurdles or obstacles that you had to overcome in the beginning of your business, you know, when you needed support of your wife. Uh, what were, what, what was, I mean, can you give us some specific examples that kind of put you at that point? Uh, was it more of fear of, of not knowing uh, the outcomes or business result of, um, or your endeavors, or was it more, was it just too hard? You just, just not realizing what, what can possibly happen. Um, I think when we first started, um, you know, I've never run a business before, you know, I've, and so I think that, that mystery or the unknown part, especially coming from a, a stable corporate environment, where you know what you're getting into <laughs> and you know what resources are around you. Um, I mean, I remember when we found our first location, uh, we've moved since, but when we were in our location, I took things for granted. I didn't even have trash cans. You, know, so you just assume in your corporate world that somebody's got, you know, trash cans and pens and pencils and post-it notes. And then I was like, wait, I've, <laughs> I've got to get all that stuff myself. Um, you know, so building things up from the ground, you know, was, was, uh, certainly, certainly scary, but now looking back on it, it's, um, you, you, you kind of see how far you've come. Now I've kind of watched Sean, um, from afar and I'll tell you guys that he's being very humble. Uh, he has received an award from the African American Chamber of Commerce, him and his wife, uh, for business of the year amongst other things. And, uh, in full transparency, I have used his services for dinner en blanc in the past. Um, so I do want to just put that out there um, just because we like, again, to have full transparency. And I will say that uh, watching you, Sean, and um, and Sharon just grow the company has been a delight. So um, we think you, are, you guys are doing great work here on Long Island. And I'm sure, you know, there's a, a trajectory to expand and continues to grow your business. Um, so behind the scenes, we were, we were chatting about the COVID and, you know, joking about those six foot signs. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how COVID has impacted your business and, you know, what's on the horizon for you guys now? One of the biggest challenges that we had when we first hit COVID was um, staff. Um, we had, you know, folks working from home and in this type of business, it's, it's a hands-on business. So being in the shop, creating signage is, is paramount. So if we don't have anybody here, we're not making signs. Um, but at the same time, places that we would normally have as customers, they were closed too. So it kind of halted everything in terms of our industry. Um, we did get some, some uh, business related to covid signage. Uh, but at the end of the day, when things started loosening up and we became an essential uh, category, uh, believe it or not, our business took off and it wasn't COVID related. It was, it was just companies coming back as business as usual and were ordering signs that at, at a clip that we couldn't believe. 
2020 was actually one of our, was our best year yet. And most of that signage was not related to any COVID signage. And so looking at last year or, you know, since you started Genesis, what are the projects that you look back on and you go, I'm really glad we did that. Really love doing that. What are your biggest accomplishments? I think when I was able to connect brands that I used to work with in my former life, you know, we're proud of those, those type of accomplishments. We've done some, some big vehicle graphic projects for, for J crew. Um, we have formed a relationship with uh, Broadway mall, Broadway commons mall in Hicksville, where we are their primary go-to sign company. So we've done a lot of um, both branding signage for the mall itself, but also the tenants. Um, so we're very proud of, of that. I think it's our most proud is just when we drive around and we see signs that we've made, you know, these are, these are people's businesses. These are, you know, they're, they're like I am, you know, just trying to get, you know, their life uh, to move in a different direction and their small business is we're a part of that. Um, so I think that's, that's our most proud knowing that we're part of the fabric of somebody else's business because we created some signage for them. Sean, is there a client that you haven't worked with yet that you, you, you want to work with one day? Hmm, that's a good question. That's a long list there, Michael. <laughs> um, I mean, I think we would like to work with brands that are, are daring with their, their graphics um, that are willing to take risks. You know, I mean, obviously, we'd love to work with, with big name brands. You know, I'd love for Nike to call me and say, hey, we've, we're opening an office in New York and we'd love you to do all of our wall graphics. And, you know, or for Amazon to call me and say, hey, we, we need you to do the graphics for our entire fleet. Um, those are the types of projects that would obviously be game changers for us. Um, but I think what we're most looking forward to this year and moving forward is we've gotten our um, certification as a minority business enterprise. And so we're certified with New York State, New York City, um, and Nassau. And so we would really love to leverage that to bid on more um, state and local and regional projects. Um, as, a, as a minority owned business, particularly in this industry, there aren't many um, at all. And so I don't have a lot of people that who I could kind of turn to for as a reference for, for support and guidance uh, when it comes to the sign industry, you know, folks that look like me. Um, so we're hoping to, kind of, you know, create a lane for anybody else who's coming behind us. And I think part of that is, again, leveraging um, the fact that uh, we have this certification and we'd love to use it um, to work with, with um, you know, more agencies in New York. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Sean Phillips, CEO of Genesis Sign and Graphics. My name is Danisha Boston Hill, along with Ray Schwetz and Michael Chung on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Now, Sean, uh, you've had quite a journey. Are there any tips you'd like to leave with some of our audience, things that you've learned over the last few years um, that, you know, you think were beneficial to your growth? Yeah, I think you have to admit when you don't know something, um, you know, I think a lot of a lot of times, you know, particularly if you're coming from somewhere else, um, you feel like, well, I, I know this. Um, there's always learning. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I've gotten so far doing this. I never had to deal with, you know, finance, the finance aspect or the accounting aspect of a business. Somebody, you know, just did that. You know, when you work in corporate America, I don't deal with that. I never had to deal with HR other than, you know, hiring somebody to work on my team, but I'm, I wasn't HR, <laughs> you know, but now I'm HR um, completely. Um, so advice, I would just talk to as many people as possible, you know, to, um, to understand what some of their challenges were and just kind of keep that list going because it's going to be a long list. Um, I would, you know, certainly really dig deep to 
figure out um, what is it you're trying to accomplish long term. Um, sometimes people just see the short term goals, but you know, what do you want to do long term? Um, and do your homework. You know, there's don't rush into anything before you have as much information as possible to get through it. Um, and even when you think you do, there's always going to be more, but certainly do your homework and research. Now, running a business yourself, being the HR, having a great year, all of that is is a lot of work, even when it's successful, right? Um, how do you maintain your work-life balance with all that? I made a conscious decision that I was going to do that no matter what. So, I mean, our business is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., my team is leaving I may be here a little bit longer because there's some things that I need to tie up, but I'm not consumed with being here till nine, 10, 11 o'clock, you know, where I don't see my family, not spending time with them on the weekends. I have to say, I just have to say to myself, walk away. Like it'll be here tomorrow. Like we're not curing cancer here. We're making signs. Um, And so I have to kind of put it into that perspective that, you know, this isn't going to, change if I leave it for tomorrow. And that allows me to then walk away peacefully and enjoy the rest of my night or enjoy my weekend and not have to worry about things. That's excellent advice. And, uh, you know, that's something actually, it's interesting that you consulted a franchise consultant. Um, That's one of the things I learned from a franchise consultant is that, you know, you may think that you're suited for one type of business, but you have to consider all aspects of that. And I think that's why it's important to speak to as many people as possible, as you said. So, you know, that said, if there was one thing that you had to tell people, you know what, if you're, if you're considering entrepreneurship, if you're considering going into this business, what's the one thing that you would tell our listener that they should consider? I would say, you know, there's, there's a short quote. It's literally inhale confidence and exhale doubt. Um, you know, when it's time to start a new chapter in your life, uh, make sure it's one that's written by you and not determined by others. Uh, that's, that's what I would, would leave for people that, um, uh, it's going to be scary, but it's possible. Um, as long as you kind of, like I said, those other steps before doing your homework, talking to people, but you define your own destiny. Um, If you're going to step out on faith and do it on your own, you control that. Um, And don't, you know, don't let anybody say that you can't do it, including yourself. Don't talk yourself out of it. So, Sean, just kind of want to circle back to, you know, the work life balance that you mentioned. Uh, Do you believe that's something that's, uh, I guess, like a core or a core foundation to what keeps you uh, motivated to work most of the time or, uh, would you say that, you know, there are other elements or components that keep you um, business orientated and focused besides the work and life balance uh, as being your core foundation to be motivated and focused in business? Are there, were there, are there any other elements that you uh, would like to give advice to our listeners today that could potentially help them if they were when they start their business? Yeah, um, I think the. What I did not want to do is repeat the same thing when I was, when I was in corporate America and, and burn out. Um, so that's part of what allows me to have some balance between the two. Um, what else motivates me, though, is um, it's partly fear, uh, fear of failure. You know, you, you know, you've kind of taken your financial resources, your time resources and invested um, and, and the fact that you have staff, it's their livelihood too, right? So my business is paying someone else's for their livelihood. And so our success is their success. Um, so, you, you know, that fear c- kicks in sometimes just to make sure that you're like, you know, it's a lot of responsibility. Um, uh, but at the same time, it, it's motivating too, uh, to make sure that we keep going and, and making sure that, um, our team, whether they're here now or future team members, will have a place where they can can thrive and grow. Um, and then I would say, lastly, motivation is 
to for my kids to see that you know there are other avenues for them too i mean there's conventional ways of of having a career and i've i've had that um but i want them to see also that entrepreneurship is an option for them whether they choose to do it or not they at least see um uh, so they see it happening no that's key and that's that's basically how you're equating your success right it is in your purpose in life i think at this journey at this at this juncture, Sean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fifty years in. <laughs> Fantastic. We are so excited to have you, and thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, I'm sure there's so many people that can learn from you. Um, and being an MWBE and going through this whole process, it's not easy. So now it's time to, uh, as I call it. Uh, you're going to bid like war dog, go low, but stay the course and don't uh, don't sacrifice because they will try to burn you out as well. Yes, indeed. Indeed. I appreciate you guys having me. Um, it's been it's been informative for me too. just to sometimes when you you're in it so much, just in the weeds to say it out loud, uh, you know, often helps, you know, me in, in my journey as well. Thank you and your entire team. So where can we see some examples of your work? And please give us your contact information so people can find you. So uh, we can be found at our website, Genesis, G-E-N-E-S-I-S, signs, S-I-G-N-S, N-Y dot com, um, or our office in Farmingdale, uh, 195 Central Avenue, Unit G, um, and then lastly, our direct number to our shop is 347-709-7446. Uh, we have Facebook page that you can check out as well, Instagram, um, you know, all the social media outlets. Uh, we're currently revamping our site, which should go live actually next week. And we're super excited about that, um, showcasing a lot of our projects. So, Oftentimes, people don't know what type of sign they want. We have we have examples of all the types of signage that we offer, so um, it makes it easier um, as people uh, consider their signage for their business. So we'll make sure we check it out. So thank you very much for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill and Michael Chung, your co-host and producers. This is an NCC Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit ncc.edu slash hpc for more information. We're available on iHeartRadio as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the NASA Community College Foundation on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC.